until just now watching the full game i'd obviously seen um, highlights before but i hadn't watched the full game before and i had forgotten um, how dominant we were at the start of the game and uh, I suppose well into the first um, quarter of the um, match. And I, th I think it shows how, first of all, how ready we were for the game, um, but also how experienced we were in, in the big games as well. When you're in those big games, uh, you, you want to be able to deal well with the pressure and the expectation of it. But I think you also want to go in with someone like um, Alison Annan and her scoring that first goal was um, apt because uh, time and time again in big matches um, she would deliver and she did again in, in Sydney. I remember because uh, the ball started on the sideline, uh, you know, leaning for the ball, leaning pretty much back towards it, then it going past me and turning back in towards the goal uh, and just watching that ball roll over the line it was um, exciting but also a bit of a relief that we got some reward for all of the pressure that we'd been applying. We'd been attacking a fair bit and you could feel that we had the RGs under pressure. Uh, our team had over 50 penalty corner variations and we used to get tested on them to make sure that we remembered them all and the deflection variations uh, were a fairly new thing back then. Of course, they're used all the time now. And as you'd expect, our penalty corners were all very secretive. So the code for the variation that we used, which Rick called, was HDF DR2R1, which in layman's terms means the hitter dummies, it's bundled to the flinger, and R2, who's the player on the far right side of the circle, runs across the middle of the goal and is the decoy to commit the defender. The pass goes to the left foot of R2 and through to R1 for the deflection. And well, it was almost perfect. I was the R2 decoy and Rochelle was R1 and it was a perfect pass from Al. Rhea was in excellent position and then hit the post with the deflection. The ball rebounded off the post, up in the air, and, and I was able to knock it in. An unbelievable feeling. Ree did the biggest Toyota jump I've ever seen. I still don't know how she got that far off the ground. And we had a, like a huge jumping hug together, and it was just awesome. But um, funnily enough, we spent hours and hours practicing goal front scrimmages and reflex shots like that, and it was something that felt very normal because we'd just done it over and over before. Yeah, I was really um, pleased to get a couple of um, opportunities in the first half. Um, early on though, I kept hitting the, hitting the goalkeeper, uh, which as a striker is obviously really um, frustrating because I didn't actually make the goalkeeper make a save. You know, she just had to stand there and I um, hit her. Um, so it annoyed me a little bit, which is why then, um, yeah, one of my shots goes just that bit wide of the net because I was really trying um, not to hit her um, again. And I just shot it just too wide. Still annoys me. It was a solid first half. We'd been playing quite well. And the message from Rick and the coaching team was just to assist, just keep doing what we were doing and keep them under the pump keep being relentless and pushing ourselves and eventually we would wear them down. I was, yeah, on the bench when the third goal um, went in. So first we got the chance to like celebrate that third goal um, with those that were on the bench, including our um, fantastic um, staff that were on the bench. Um, and a three goal lead is then really, well, it's hard to, hard to deny. Um, I felt like there were a number of players that um, had really good games um, when I watched it back, like Kate Starr, Alison Annan, um, Renita Gerard, Katie Allen, um, but also Jen Morris. I think she played her 150th and to score that third goal um, was just fantastic. And you can see how excited she is to score that goal but particularly after having been um, through so much with knee reconstructions. You know, there's plenty of people watching this um, video that can relate to um, injuries and, and being sat out for a long time and how hard it is to come back from some of those um, setbacks. And it was just that, 
that little bit of extra reward for her for all the hard work that she put in. Having recently watched the final for the first time since playing it <laughs> 20 years ago, one of the first thing I noticed was uh, how well Jen played. Um, from the anthem, she looked to be on this mission. She was so confident, so determined, so dominant. This was Jen, though, um, and the time out through injury only seemed to strengthen her. Um, I have this lasting memory of her work walking the sidelines, collecting balls at every session whilst she was injured. I remember her supporting me, having a crack at me, and staying very much part of the group um, throughout. It must have been so incredibly hard to do that <laughs> for two years. Um, and in some ways it's not surprising that how well she performed, performed in that um, Olympics uh, and in the final, given what she endured. It felt great to get that third goal, but it definitely didn't feel like we had it in the bag. We knew how good the Argies were. They had incredible strikers that could quickly turn a game. And sure enough, they came at us. They had a real crack and we were under the pump in defence in that second half. I remember they got a penalty corner and I was in the second runner position. And I looked up at Oneto, uh, one of their key strikers at the top of the circle. She was their gun deflector on the left. And I just knew it was going to her. We'd watched it on video so many times. So I took a punt and ran straight at her, ran straight to her. And sure enough, they made the pass and I was lucky enough to be able to block her. And in fact, she got called for obstruction. So for just that moment, I thought, yep, all those hours and hours of video analysis we did actually paid off. Um, oh, the Argentinian goal. Um, Argentina and their individual players were so dangerous and they didn't need much of an opportunity to score. Um, and we knew that, and perhaps it was only a matter of time before they started to build into the game and build confidence. You know, to break open spaces with their skill and speed and, and make some chances. Um, so yes, with 26 minutes to go, it was on. <laughs> yeah, I remember that part of the game, how like it was yesterday. Um, I'm still annoyed that it went in and that I missed the ball <laughs> um, at the end, but also when it came out around the 25, um, allowing them to break into the circle. Uh, it was my job and my nature to keep the opposition from scoring and I took real pride in that. Um, so I guess I was trying everything I could at that point to stop them knowing what was on the line. But yeah, I'm still angry about it.